I'm Scott Metcalf, the artistic director of this program of Flemish and Dutch music from the middle of the 16th century to the middle of the 17th century, a program that was designed to fit into the sort of space that you see here uh, around me, a sort of a Dutch domestic setting uh, from the 17th century and a program which is designed to connect to the art on the walls here at the MFA. We open with a set of psalm settings, three of them by Jan Pietersson Svelink, perhaps the most famous Dutch musician of the early 17th century. These are polyphonic settings of tunes and texts from the Calvinist Genevan Psalter, and they're in French, uh, a language which was clearly used among educated Dutch citizens uh, in the early 17th century. Now, these pieces were not meant for church use. The Calvinist churches in the Protestant Netherlands in the 17th century were very sparse and spare. You can see uh, some interiors in these paintings by San Redam. And uh, they're, everything is very white and uh, empty. Uh, and you, they were also spaces empty of polyphony. The congregation might sing psalm tunes in unison, but polyphony was too fancy and uh, sensual. And Calvin thought it distracted from the message of the gospel. However, Svelink took all 150 psalms and set them polyphonically in these marvelous settings where the tunes are used in every single uh, voice. So you hear the tune pervading the setting and we'll sing three of those. They would have been sung perhaps on a Sunday afternoon after returning from church uh, in one's parlor. It was a season of Thank you. 
Next, we have a set of secular music. Uh, these songs are also in French, largely, um, and they're settings by uh, Flemish and Dutch composers. We include one song in Dutch. It's a translation or a, a Dutch version of the English ballad Daphne, telling the story of Daphne fleeing Apollo, which comes from Ovid. And uh, here the Dutch poet has given, besides a typically Dutch moralizing ending to the story, uh, some detail. Apollo expounds at length on why Daphne should join him in heaven for many reasons. He, he's immortal for one thing, his hair never gets gray, he doesn't ever get old. Um, and if she could only hear him singing to his fiddle, 
then she would surely be enchanted and agree uh, to be with him and not flee as she does. That fiddle is the same one that we'll see uh, later in this program in a painting being held by Orpheus. I'm Christopher Atkins, the Von Adelu Weatherby Director of the Center for Netherlandish Art. I'm standing in front of a painting by Gerrit van Honthorst from about 1623-24. Honthorst painted this picture in Utrecht after returning from a 10-year period working in Italy. This picture in particular was inspired by the works of Caravaggio and other Italian artists that he saw during his time there. We have a scene of mirth and frivolity and good fun as the musicians are playing music before a crowd. And they look like they're extending and operating within our space. Their arms overhang the balustrade so that they inhabit our space, extending and breaking the picture plane, which would provide a perfect setting for a 17th century Dutch interior that might have music being played in front of it.
Hello, my name is Antine Knaap. I'm the assistant curator of European paintings here at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Just at the, as the period's vocal music was based on ancient text, including classical literature or the Bible, many paintings were also inspired by writings from the ancient world. The poet Ovid recounts how Orpheus, a legendary Greek musician, could soothe wild animals with his captivating music. Ovid describes Orpheus playing a lyre, but here the painter Albert Kuyp gives him a violin. The setting is a typical Dutch landscape populated by native species. But Kuyp adds American, Asian, and African creatures too, including jaguars, a camel, an elephant, and an ostrich. Kuyp probably saw some of them firsthand, but he almost certainly studied pictures of them in engravings and books. The picture is, at the same time, an illustration of a classical story, a landscape, and an animal painting. But it occupies a place of honor in the center of our gallery because it also makes a political statement. The picture draws a parallel between Orpheus's control over the animals and the Dutch Republic's dominance of the globe. Oh, so sweet, so sweet, that 
Hello, I'm Frederick Ilchman, the Mrs. Russell Baker Curator of Paintings and Chair Art of Europe here at the MFA. Singing is the most personal and direct kind of music. Not only do vocalists convey specific ideas through the lyrics, but also their instruments are, of course, their own bodies. Something immersive happens when one sings with great concentration. The whole body and mind work together to produce the sound. In this painting by Hendrik Tebruggen, a boy, depicted life-sized, focuses on the musical notes in the book he carries. Swept up in the emotion, he can't help but gesture with his right hand. Tebruggen was the first of a number of artists from the Dutch city of Utrecht who traveled to Rome and fell under the sway of the work of the Italian painter Caravaggio. Tebruggen used ordinary artist models but dressed them in colorful costumes similar to those worn by street entertainers. Like this painting, many of Tebruggen's pictures feature a single figure isolated against a blank background. And finally, we have a set of Christmas carols, a pair of Christmas carols, which might be sung, for example, by a group of carolers going door to door on Twelfth Night.
Service, the service, the service. 